Hi guys, this is Wirehead King, and today I'll be teaching you how to use the new B-Mesh system in Blender 2.63. And I'm only really going to be covering the basics in this because you know B-Mesh is a huge update and has tons of tools and new features. And to be honest, I'm still uh, finding out new features of this every day. But these are just the ones that I've um, discovered in these last few days where BMesh has been available. Uh, well, it's been available for months technically, but um, in it's now trunk in the latest version of Blender, which is Blender 2.63 as I'm saying this, but anything after that will have BMesh. So, uh, what is BMesh is what you're probably asking if you're not really an updated Blender user. Well, BMesh is the new modeling system that is a, comp a huge step forward from the old one uh, where you could only really handle any uh, faces that have up to four vertices but with BMesh you can have as many vertices as you like to face and because of this it's now got loads of new tools that you can use to model stuff that really the old modeling system would have uh, not really worked with so it's really Sort of optimized modeling and we can get a lot more done uh, simply because we've now got these things called n-gons which I think I've already said can handle more than four vertices to a face so if I just give you a simple demonstration if we go into edit mode and select the, this edge here on our cube one of the new features with uh, B-Mesh is the ability to bevel these edges in edit mode because originally you would have to add uh, a bevel modifier and then it, uh, if you do that it will just bevel everything which is not really what we want we just want in this case to just bevel this edge here so if we press W and choose bevel you can see that it's uh, sort of uh, it's added a new face here and squashed down uh, this corner now this percentage value down here if you press T to bring up this we can play around with this the smaller it is then the less uh, effective this uh, you know beveled edge is if that makes sense um, and you know the more it is then the more visible it is so that's just a simple explanation to it so if we just leave it like that in fact let's make it a bit bigger there we go somewhere around there you can see that now we have this face here and it's not being separated into any uh, separate chunks it's now got uh, five vertices on its face which is uh, it doesn't seem revolutionary but um, it kind of is to some people uh, but to others it's not and that's perfectly acceptable because at first I didn't quite see the big deal but after using it I do so with this this is you know just like any other face we can extrude it you know just gonna inset it a bit extrude it in and you know it's just like any other face as I've said uh, and that's just essentially what the end one is however if we were to just quickly uh, redo that scene here so just bevel it and there we go now as you can see we've got this end gone here however uh, end gones are not particularly ideal for our final uh, render or whatever it is we're going to be especially if we're working on a game so how do we go about uh, returning this back into quads well if we add a loop cut along the bottom here uh, because this end gone is enough to sort of uh, stop the loop cut from being able to go around this you can see that now uh, we've got these four vertices available to make a face here and then these ones here can make a face somewhere else however first of all we need to split this end gone in half otherwise we're going to have some weird overlapping effects so if we select this vertex here or this vertex here and this vertex here and press J that will then split up this uh, end gone into two quads and the rest is basically been done for us and we can do the same on this side select this vertex and this vertex and press J and as I said the same has happened so 
Uh, you're probably wondering why I press J and not F, and let me show you why. If I have to press F, it just adds an edge in the middle. Now, although this appears to work, you'll notice that the end gone is still appearing as just one face, and I can extrude it, and this uh, new edge here has got no effect on it. That's because, as I say, it's just made this random edge in the middle that just happens to be, uh, you know, in between two vertices on this angon. However, if we press J, Blender will cleverly split the angon into uh, two sections, and we now have two, uh, you know, uh, two normal regular faces. And this is essentially what you have to do whenever you get any angon. So you might be thinking, then surely Ngon is a, you know, a problem. But that's completely not true because, as you saw, I could easily bevel this edge here, creating a new face, and it, this result was an Ngon on this side and this side. Uh, now this, uh, as I say, you know, Ngons have to return to quads. So all we had to really do from there is just put in a cut and return it into a quad there instead of the long method which we would have had to have done last blender version where we split up all these things and you know join them up individually and so you know in just a few minutes in fact a few seconds i've managed to create this shape here rather than a few minutes which is what it would have taken to do it in the original modeling version of blender or original whatever now, another thing you might notice is we've got these funny shapes here. Now, these are fine, not really a problem, but you can get rid of them by pressing uh, W and, no, sorry, X, and choosing Dissolve. Oh, wait, no, sorry, I'm embarrassing myself, it's not working. Okay, if we just select these two, there we go. If we select uh, this face and this face, press X and choose Dissolve, we have now managed to uh, create more endgons. And that way we can now, if we were to go into face select, just select on them. Uh, one of the problems is this, uh, you know, the points that we get to select these on, you know, if I select this face, you can see that its uh, origin point is here. Uh, I don't know if uh, that's uh, going to be fixed ever, or if there's a way to change that. Uh, but, you know, you have to sort of get used to the fact that uh, these little black dots are no longer going to be in these faces if it's a strangely shaped engon like that. But you can still just select the geometry uh, of the engon and it will work fine. So if we just extrude this out and let's say we want to, uh, I don't know, cut a shape into this area here. Now this can be done simply in, well, in many ways but let's say I want to get a strange shape. So if I had to press K this brings up the new tool called the knife tool. And there was something similar to this uh, where it would split the uh, vertices in half or whatever. Uh, but this is now the proper knife tool that's used in other uh, modeling, well, any other software like Blender basically. And with this, if I were to click here and then, uh, you know, move my mouse around, you can see that it's now creating a new, um, you know, new edge. So I can go there. And there, there and there, and you can see if we now press enter we now have a new sort of diamond shape in the middle of our mesh and if I just insert that a bit, there we go, and this is again just like any other face and it works very nicely. So uh, that's just another tool and this knife tool doesn't just work well snapping onto edges, you can also uh, just put it randomly in the object like I'm doing here and create some strange patterns and then finish it off on this edge press enter and you can now see we've got another n-gon that uh, is in the shape that I just created so you know we can again do whatever we like with that so uh, yeah this is just a random shape it makes it quite ugly actually but I hope that explains the basics of beamesh there's a lot more to it than this uh, but, you know, I'm hoping that this has uh, sort of helped you out with some things, maybe shown you a few features that you didn't already know about, all that stuff, you know. So if you enjoyed this tutorial and learnt anything from it or whatever, uh, please do subscribe to my channel. Uh, that's really appreciated if you do that. Uh, also give this video a thumbs up. Anyway, um, as I was saying, uh, please do, you know, 
subscribe, like this video, comment, if you've got any suggestions for a tutorial or any requests or whatever, please do comment, I'll be happy to see what I can do, all that stuff. So thanks for watching, and goodbye.